is a fairly organic event where uh, students, faculty, engineers, computer programmers, people from multiple disciplines get together to come up with creative solutions to current problems. Um, and in our case, what we're trying to do is create a hackathon around global health. We're presenting four uh, to five clinical challenges from around the world, surgery, obstetrics, gastroenterology, anesthesia, um, and asking the group um, to come up with innovative solutions to this over a course of 24 hours. I'm sure many of you have always wanted to go out to Sub-Saharan Africa or other places around the world to help, and this is your big opportunity to help. We got a very diverse group of hackers from academics, from industry, from all over the country actually. We have students from Baylor College of Medicine, Baylor University, Rice University, the University of Texas, MIT, Cornell. Um, we have postgraduate students, um, medical students, GI fellows, some faculty, some uh, people from industry, some professional hackers <laughs> who have all come together in this one space in TMCX to come up with, some, to, with innovative solutions to global health problems. So probably the greatest resource we can provide is actual mentorship from doctors who've been in the field, from engineers who understand the area really well. We even have um, engineers from NASA who will be here to help with some of the uh, mentoring. And in addition to that, they've got supplies and props, 3D printers, duct tape, pipe cleaners, paper, cardboard, um, whiteboards, and hopefully an unlimited supply of broadband <laughs> for the projects. The CAPES are here to identify the mentors and their relevant areas of expertise. So I am a clinical mentor, I'm a gastroenterologist, this is a blue CAPE for clinical medicine or biomedical sciences. Then we also have green CAPES for the engineers. We have yellow CAPES for uh, social sciences. We have red CAPES for business administration and management. And we have black CAPES for information, communication, technology, and programming. So I'm Seth Cochran. I'm the founder of Operation Fistula. Um, I have a, a very diverse background. Um, I studied engineering. I worked in private equity. Um, I, I developed disruptive technologies in the telecommunications industry. I built a factory in the Czech Republic. Uh, I've worked in 30 countries essentially over the last seven years building capacity in, uh, in global health. You know? But as soon as people got to stand up on stage and kind of say their idea, the, the electricity sort of started sparking in the room. You know, people were, were excited to kind of talk about their idea. And then it, as soon as those first few people went, then there was a little side group that was attracting other, other people to come and talk about whatever idea had just been presented. And then once everyone was done, now you had this sort of other mingling of, of, of you know, mentors, judges, other uh, participants, all kind of coming together and talking about ideas. And so we're at the stage right now where the initial sort of spark of those ideas is starting to kind of catch a little bit. In certain places, there's little mini smoldering fires happening. And as we're going around to fan that, you know, that flame, and you can feel it even building up more. So we're at a point now where we're trying to put a little bit more structure to, to kind of say, right, here, what approach should we take? How should we focus? this idea on something that we could actually you know, build a prototype for and test. This is our first annual hackathon and we don't know what to expect, but um, it's going great and we're really excited to see some unique collaborations develop that hopefully we can move forward in Africa, uh, perhaps with NASA. And we're really hoping to see a couple um, innovative solutions to problems that need to be addressed in global settings. I, would, I couldn't believe some of the things that people came up with in 24-hour period, working prototypes of devices and some novel ways to store data and some good solutions. One guy has a, has a um, uh, drone that delivers uh, uh, blood. It was very cool. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Loli Jobe, a 25-year-old female in the Gambia, passed away due to a massive postpartum hemorrhage during an at-home delivery with her midwife. A sustainable, cost-efficient endoscopic therapy 
for the treatment of esophageal varices in the developing world. And then banding uh, is what we're demonstrating here. Uh, we're deploying bands on a, a chicken leg. Uh, uh, quite successfully, a little bit excessive there. Uh, I'm sure you're asking, why is this doctor holding this dumb calculator? But here's why. It's because that suit makes things incredibly difficult for this doctor. A suit makes things hard, so our solution needs to make things easy. It's expandable transparent, so it can be stored and collapsed. It has a pair of arm and sleevelets, although in the prototype there's only one pair of arm sleevelets. There's a basic surgical kit sealed inside so we can maintain sterility. A hard sharpness pocket for the scalpel. A drain port on either side. There's double panel door flaps in case if it's necessary to, in an emergency, insert additional equipment into the device, and it's disposable. Okay, so, so uh, I just heard 18 hitches. And uh, it's pretty exciting. They came up with a lot of really cool stuff. We now, I'm not one of the judges, so I have to go back and argue, figure out who the best three are. So that's what I'm doing. So the first place winner of our first annual, I, actually I don't know if it'll be annual, maybe it'll be annual. <laughs> we need to recover. The first um, official at Baylor Global Health Hackathon 2015 is the Hackascope. <laughs> So our idea was to build a low-cost uh, endoscope uh, that would create opportunity to do endoscopy in low resource settings. So I'm going to describe the basic design. What we have here is a snake cam. Uh, the one we found was 40 bucks, but you can buy them online for as low as 10. And it's waterproof, and it already has an LED built in, and it connects to the computer via USB. And so that was our basic uh, substrate, and then we attached these uh, pieces of plastic tubing that run the length of the unit and through those we can run things like thread uh, to deploy the bands and also guitar strings to actually make the end of the device move. Um, we also have a third uh, lumen as well for suction and one of the hardest parts, the biggest challenges of actually making uh, the device work was to create this adapter which we had to 3D print and uh, Andy helped us over, over uh, at the 3D printer with that but it basically allowed us to interface between the end of the camera and these standardized um, endoscopic band deployers. So. so it was great. It's I great. think we all had different <laughs> yeah. uh, contributions to yeah. the project mm -hmm. and everyone brought out, I guess, their ideas of what would work, what not, you know, and then we just hacked it together, see what worked, what did not, and came up with this. Yeah. <laughs> and